Hello, everyone. Uh, so excuse the crappy mood that I'm in. Uh, I literally just spent the last two fucking hours trying to record this video, only to have it overridden uh, each time. Uh, YouTube really sucks as far as platforms go for this kind of thing, um, which is surprising because they have a lot of money and a lot of engineers. Uh, so I decided to just do a Hangout on Air because that's uh, what I'm used to and, um, and you know, we'll compile this into a video. Uh, Anywho, um, yeah, so week seven. I'm just going to jump into the questions really, uh, really quick um, because, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time <laughs> trying to do this. So without further ado, uh, let's dive in here. Um, hold on, let me load up Gryffindor's questions. Okay, uh, JB1981 says, um, what's more important to follow, the feeding window or macros? Uh, macros trumps everything, right? So macros should be the number one priority. Uh, feeding window is second on the hierarchy of things. So always always hit your macros first, uh, even if you have to break your feeding window. Uh, second question, Taz Gonzo says, what... Okay, so we've been all working out. Um, let's see. I know it's generally healthy to be able to lift more, but I mean, what can I do to take advantage of a stronger back and shoulder muscles? Um, so that is... I mean, that's kind of the wrong way of looking at things. Um, what can I do? Like, okay, you can do a lot of things. It really depends on, on what you want to do with them. Um, from a functional standpoint, strength is the only thing that really translates from um, from sport or from domain to domain. <clears throat> so more on that. Good example, Lance Armstrong. <laughs> well, now we know he, he doped, but uh, he, you know, one of the best cyclists in the world, transferred all of one of the best cyclists in the world tried to run a marathon, um, and he sucked at it. Why? Because when it comes to other things aside from strength, uh, you really can't transfer, you know, that fitness skill. Um, not fitness skill in the softer sense; it's skills uh, like we talk about humility, self-compassion, all that. No, but like actually, the skill of like biking doesn't translate into uh, running a marathon so well. Unlike um, that, with strength, um, strength transfers into everything. So, you know, I've trained off-season triathletes, and, uh, you know, they told me that when they jumped right back into their triathlons, um, you know, everything was so much easier, even though they weren't training because um, they were off-season with me. Um, but, again, that's, that's from the sport fitness side of things. Um, what I would say is, is saying what can I do with this muscle is, is kind of the wrong way of looking at things, right? Because, remember, what we're trying to do is we are trying to lower your weight loss flash body fat floor. Um, and so the fact that you have a lot more muscle means that it takes a lot less effort to stay lean. Um, it takes a lot less effort because your your maintenance calories are now a lot higher now that you have more muscle. Um, instead of burning you know, 2,000 calories a day, you're now burning, let's say, 2,500 calories a day after putting on a ton of muscle. And uh, it's easier to stay lean. Um, and that's, that's the whole purpose of this program, right, is to make sure that Everything that occurs is is maintainable. All of your progress is maintainable. Uh, if you look at something like cardio, right? Um, cardio is, is a horrible way to lose weight, right? Because you need to keep doing that same amount of cardio in order to stay at that same weight. So cardio is kind of like paying off a credit card bill versus building muscle, which is uh, like it's it's like building an asset. It's like buying a house, right? Like you put down money on your mortgage every month, but then you have that asset, uh, which is there for life. Um, tips on consistently taking waist measurements. Uh, first thing in the morning, um, before you eat or drink anything, that's that's the first thing that makes it consistent. Um, make sure that you are you're not sucking in, but you're kind of at attention. Um, and then, you know, take it at your navel and two inches above, two inches below. Like, don't overcomplicate it. Um, it's going to vary from week to week, uh, from you know day to day, but just don't overcomplicate it. Uh, I go to the gym, um, different gym locations depending on schedule. I find that one gym has a normal machine for lat pull downs and seated rows. Another location I go to has the dual pulley system. Um, found that I lifted way less than the dual pulley system. Which one should I stick to? Okay, uh, so yeah, you're going to find that gyms, like 80 pounds in one gym is going to be different than 80 pounds in another gym, even if it's the exact same machine. Um, that's because you know weight is really on the pulley system, really has to do not just with gravity, but with also friction. Friction on the machine, so if you have a machine with a high 
coefficient of friction, um, then you know it's going to feel like it's heavier. So it's going to be different from gym to gym. Just try to be consistent with uh, the gym that you use for that given exercise. Finally, got a standing desk back. Uh, standing desks are stupid. I would uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't affect anything on your plans. But honestly, dude, like, the amount of calories that you burn every day from things like standing or moving around, that, that's like such a minuscule amount compared to the amount that you burn overall. Somebody's, you know, if, if you burn 2,000 calories a day, right, um, let's say your, your, your resting metabolic rate is, um, you know, 2,000 calories a day, then really you're only going to add an additional like 300 calories um, from activity, all activity, really, it's like 10% or so. Like, do you really want to spend that standing? Um, again, this goes back to our readings, right? Like, the, the healthy article, right? the word healthy sucks. All right, so the standing desk, you know, there, there might be studies showing that the standing desk is beneficial, but like think about like its impact on like willpower, right? Like is is that extra few hundred dozen, or maybe dozen calories a day standing like really worth um, standing? Anecdotally, I will say that two things I've seen with a lot of people who don't make progress, standing desks and Vibram shoes. Um, I like there's I'm not hating on either of those, but I just noticed uh, a ridiculous amount of people with standing desks um, who think that that standing desk is going to do something, and it really doesn't. Right? So the fact that you're following this program is is great. Um, and Taz, like I like looking at your progress, like it's amazing, right? Do you really want to like I don't know? You're not going to get very much additional return from the standing desk, and so I think the best thing that you could probably do is like again marshmallow uh, article. Like, don't focus on fitness at all. Like, spend your time doing other things, put everything on autopilot, and um, that's going to eke out the best results for your book. I hate standing this, by the way. Uh, Ranger Danger says, could we have a rundown on keywords or other advice? Reading through mumbo-jumbo <laughs> supplements, I gotta hate GNC. Um, sorry, wait, let me try to... Okay, yes. So keywords. So what supplements should you buy, in other words? Right? So BCAAs should contain um, you should okay, so if you're buying a BCA, look at the calories on the back. It should be zero to ten I mean, there might be a little a few calories just for like, you know, the additional flavoring, whatever that comes in there, but it really shouldn't be any. Um, there should be additional calories. Um, they should contain leucine. That's that's really that is the most uh, impactful amino acid out of all the BCAAs. As long as it contains leucine, there is five grams per serving, and it doesn't contain calories, and that's what you should be getting. Um, I would stick first off. Try to avoid GNC, like like the plague. I hate GNC so much. Um, get um, uh, extend BCAAs are great. Go on Amazon. Um, in fact, if you just order all your supplements on Amazon, they're going to be a lot cheaper. In terms of whey protein, um, look to see that the first ingredient is whey protein isolate or whey protein concentrate. Um, and that's really it. Those are the only two supplements that I'll really recommend, and uh, those are the ways that you should be looking for them. But I would I would definitely recommend buying them um, online instead of, of offline. Uh, Hey Jason, thank you. Uh, what TV shows are you enjoying lately? Um, I oh wait no, I skipped over some questions. Did I? Sorry, this is. I think I'm accidentally hopping back and forth between this. Uh, sorry, I'm. Oh, okay. I skipped a few questions. So here. Um, is it okay for those of us currently using dumbbells for exercises uh, to move over to using barbells instead? Yes, it is okay to eventually use barbells instead. Um, dumbbells, I prefer dumbbells um, even for all my exercises, but if you want to move over to barbells, you are free to do that. Uh, Easy Smash says, stretching or any good routine to keep flexibility up. Um, honestly, I think flexibility is a little bit overrated in that um, <clears throat> if you're playing a sport, of course, you should be, you know, you should be flexible. You should stretch, etc. The things that we're doing have a very fixed range of motion, right? and so the best stretch that you can do for these exercises is warming up with a lighter weight. Um, that acts in itself as, as a stretch. 
So warm up with lighter weights. Make sure that by the time you get to your working set, you're good and warmed up without having exerted very much effort, and uh, you will be fine. Um, let's see. Okay, Taz says, um, different gyms have different assisted chin-up sets. Uh, I've done chin-ups with my grip beyond shoulder width with palms facing me, chin-ups with narrow grip. Uh, which one's the best to do? So, um, in terms of ROI, the best chin-up you can do is chin-ups with palms. I mean, the definition of chin-up is obviously palms facing you. But palms facing you are uh, a little bit narrower. And what that will do is it will work your biceps. Oh, nice. I like the way my biceps look in this video. Uh, it will work your biceps as well as give you a, um, a, a good lat workout as well. Um, and so it's, it's kind of best bang for your buck in terms of ROI. Um, technically, to work your lats more, you want to do a wide grip pull-up. Um, that'll hit your lats the most. But I think in terms of bang for your buck, uh, especially if you're busy and you want to get in and out of the gym ASAP, close grip, check. Uh, let's see here. There we go, Jason Jess. Thank you for this question. What TV shows are you enjoying lately? Um, Game of Thrones, dude. I watch all of Game of Thrones, and I'm starting to watch it again. Uh, and you know, the first time you watch it, it's super overwhelming. You don't know who any of the characters are, or what's going on. The second time I'm watching it, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like I know exactly what's going on. I'm looking at all these subplots that I missed before, and it's fucking great. Um, how essential are BCAs to our morning routine? Um, are they primarily for energy and appetite suppression? So they do help with both energy and appetite suppression, and also um, there's a study I posted earlier how they help with uh, DOMS, um, aka muscle soreness afterwards. BCAs, uh, the ROI is questionable. There seems to be an ROI, right, um, in that you know there's, there's good evidence to show that it helps with muscle protein synthesis, uh, and if you work out fasted while it seems like there is a an extra anabolic effect after the workout, um, you know you really are in a kind of catabolic state when you work out. So BCAs save that off. It's it's very open ended, right? So the reason I leave BCAs as optional is because it depends on how how um, it depends on if if you want to get that extra ROI for the extra cost of BCAs and the extra hassle of taking. So there is an ROI. I don't know how much it is. Uh, if you're a leaner, it'll probably be higher um, because those who are carrying a little bit more body fat, uh, for them, um, being in a catabolic state isn't as much of a concern. During workouts, um, what if the muscles consistently being taxed aren't the primary muscle groups of the workout. Yes, uh, so it is a possible form issue. Um, what I would ask is, is this a problem that seems to have been uh, alleviated over time? Uh, or is uh, has this been an issue, right? If you have a lagging body part, let's say it's your lower back for squats. Um, in that case, if it's lower back for squats, then you know maybe uh, by doing it enough, you know, your, your lower back is going to catch up. Uh, so I, I would ask, has it been getting better over time? If it hasn't been getting better over time, then um, shoot a video, a uh, form video, and I'll check that out. Uh, in terms of you know additional work with that body part, it might help, it might not. Um, just because you know you are most of you, if not all of you, are, are on a caloric deficit, right? So uh, when you're on a caloric deficit, um, things take longer to recover. Right? And so, if something takes longer to recover, does it make sense if you keep working that part more? For some things, it seems like it does. Uh, for your lower back, anecdotally, I'm not sure why, but if you do uh, hyperextensions every day, even if you are on a caloric deficit, it seems to have a, um, a recovery effect, right? So maybe you're not trying to PR all the time, but you're just getting blood to that, to that area. So uh, tell me specifically, what is the what is the exact part? Um, and uh, shoot a video, and I'll be happy to check it out. Um, comment about the reading for this week. What do you think about these stats generally? Uh, bench press is body weight times 1.2. Um, chin ups would be body weight times 1.2 or 8 reps. Okay, so generally, um, 
yeah, these are these are probably intermediate, uh, intermediate numbers that you're listing. So I mean, there's one of two ways you can accomplish that. Right? One is you could get stronger. The other is you could lose body fat while not losing any lean mass. And that is the direction I think um, that's the best to go, right? Because if you weigh 200, 250 pounds, you know, it's not going to be very likely that you're going to pull a 500 pound deadlift. Um, but it is going to be, you know, relatively easy compared to that to get down to something like 150 pounds, 170 pounds. Um, okay, next set of questions. What are your thoughts on kettlebell and suspension training? Uh, I started with the idea of saving money on a gym membership. Um, to be honest, uh, kettlebells are outside of my area of expertise. Um, what I would say is that, you know, as long as you have a, a program, I believe Pavel has a good kettlebell program. Um, as long as you have a program that focuses on progressive overload, uh, you will make progress um, that's outside my area of expertise. It's probably, you know, you're probably going to be able to um, make progress on that, but I won't be able to help you uh, that much. Um, can I move assisted chin-ups out from being in the middle of two-bar exercises? Oh, of the two-bar exercises. Um, you could do that. Yeah, you could probably save it until the very end, although... Um, the reason it's in the middle is because if you were to leave it until the end, it would probably uh, you would probably you know have your performance dwindle on chin-ups at the end more so than you would on pen lays or rows at the end. So uh, you could and see where that goes. Um, Want to make sure that you're calculating the weight for assisted chin-ups correctly. Reduce the total weight. Um, so yeah, so let me just go over how to do, how to calculate that. So if you are using an assisted chin-up, um, your total weight is going to be your weight minus the assist. So if I'm 200 pounds and I'm using 100 pounds on assistance, my total weight's 100. If I want to reduce 10%, I want my total weight to be 90 pounds. So I would adjust the pin so that my total weight is 90 pounds. So, um that would be 110 assistance that I'd be using. Um, sorry, Psycho Penguin, I, uh, if I were to read this right now, I think it would take too much time, but I'll make sure that your math is correct when I'm done with this. Uh, Chin-ups should be done, um, palms facing you, and uh, relatively close together, like I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'll get to your. <laughs> I love how I love how enthusiastic you are. I'll get to four um, privately. Yeah. So on barbell curls, so the question is, if you can do seventy on barbell curls, but you have to thrust your pelvis forward to get the bar all the way up, uh, yeah, you probably want to take it down a little bit. Although, to be to be honest, you're going to, a lot of people are going to hate on an answer like I'm about to say, but like the answer I'm about to give. But honestly, if you, as long as form is good and you keep it consistent week over week. Do whatever you want as long as it doesn't lead to injury and you're using full range of motion. So you'll see people like, well, I call this neck bearding. They'll like obsess over the position of their like bicep. There was this dude, okay, perfect story. There was this dude at the gym who was trying to correct my overhead press, which was like, you know, a good 200 pounds. And he was like, are you, um, you sure your supinator, like your supinator, like, the fractals are like closer. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't. I appreciate you trying to like give me form tips, but like, I really don't care. So, you can really, really, really get into as much detail about form as you want, right? The important thing is that you don't injure yourself. Number one and number two, you improve week over week. As long as those two things are, are those two requirements are held, then it doesn't really matter what the fuck you do. Um, as long as, again, make sure that those two things are, are you know, requirements that are in place. Um, and so if you, you know, if you're somebody who squats, you know, and it's less, like you feel less pain from having your toes pointed out a lot versus having your toes straight forward, then go with that. As long as you are uh, consistent week over week. And too many people will obsess over form. Um, but keep, keeping that in mind, yeah, I mean, if you want to stick with that same weight, and you don't feel like 
you are using your back too much, um, and you don't feel like anything is going to be injured, feel free to do that as long as you PR the next week. Um, or you could take it down. Let's see. I think I'm doing squats wrong. I squat all the way down there from sitting on my feet, then struggle to get up, twisting my knees in all sort of crazy directions. Ooh. Um, is there pain? That's the first thing that I would uh, I would ask. I don't know what you mean by twisting your knees to get up there. Um, if there's no pain, then it might be okay. If you shoot a form video, I'm, I'm glad to help you. Um, yeah, knees in general should remain above uh, your ankle, um, which means you don't get your thighs. But okay, what I would do is just go as low as you can um, whilst making sure that, number one, uh, your chest is upright, so if you have a logo on your chest, let's pretend I have a logo on my shirt, everyone should be able to see that. Number two, the first movement should be your hips going back. Um, yeah, this is one of the limitations with, I mean, I, I think online coaching works really well, but one of the limitations is form correcting. Um, so shoot a video, and I'll, I'll be glad to help you. Um, weighted ab cable crunches. Are those supposed to stress my arms more than my arms? Nope, they should stress your arms more. Make sure that your arms are to your side and held in place. If they um, stress your arms more, you don't feel like you're getting a good ab workout, feel free to switch it up. I don't really don't care what you use for abs as long as it's something that's progressive. So you could use, uh, you know, you could do weighted crunches where you're holding the um, holding a plate. Um, you could even use the crunch machine. Hmm. While traveling, you won't have access to a gym for a few days. What are some good options to work on the same muscles without weights? Uh, ping me for details on that. That's um, that's very kind of individually specific, and I might actually say, if you're just traveling for a few days, just shift everything over. Since we skipped onboarding week, uh, is the program going to be cut a week short? I didn't want to start doing anything until week two when I'd gotten my diet and workout plan, so I feel like the whole thing has artificially been pushed ahead a week. Uh, yes. So I'm horrible with dates, but yes, since onboarding week doesn't count, um, then yeah, there's an additional week that's going to be in place. Um, <laughs> If you miss a gym and are on a caloric deficit, what is the point you have to worry about muscle loss? Uh, actually, I forget the exact study, but actual um, atrophy doesn't occur until something like in the months, right? So don't worry about, if you were to skip the gym for an entire week, as long as your diet is in check, okay with me. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, two weeks, yeah, that's when we should probably start talking if you're going to travel for that long. Uh, John says, I do a lot of dirt biking, sometimes pretty intense four to six hour rides. Any advice on maintaining diet but still <laughs> eating enough not to bonk? Um, bars were my little standby. One bar is a significant part of my carbs. Um, this, is, uh, this is a more individual question, so please uh, PM me. OK, that is it. Thanks, everyone. Uh, sorry for the fact that I sped through this and that it was um, all a bit of a jumble, but uh, yeah, this has been kind of frustrating for me. We'll, we'll figure out what to do next week um, with regards to Q&As. Okay, bye.